Adam back with WAG Works Off-Road. Today we're in the shop working on our 5.3 again and we are going to be talking piston rings. Ring gaps, uh, how to install the piston rings, and let's first start off by saying ring gaps are a critical part of your engine build. And if you don't have the proper ring gap, what's going to happen is the end of the ring can close up. Right there, you see that. If that end of that ring closes up, it's going to allow too much heat to build up in there. And it's going to push down on the edge of the piston and cause one of these piston shelves right here to collapse and break off. It don't matter if it's a forwards piston, it don't matter if it's a cast piston, it will break just the same. So let's talk about how we figure our ring gap. Um, Everything I've been taught and told tells us to figure out four thousandths per inch of bore. And this motor is a 5.3, but it's a 20 over 5.3, 20 or 25 over. I think it's a 20 over 5.3, so that puts it at three inches, 800 thousandths. I'm gonna double check that real quick with a pair of digital dial calipers. I'm just going to check right on the inside of the bore and it's showing thirty-seven nine nine five. So yep and I'm half tenth under so five tenths under so I am three inches eight hundred thousandths. So let me grab a calculator and I'll show you the formula. Hope you can see this. Okay. So we're going to clear this out. Our bore is three inches, eight hundred thousandths. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.004 equals. All right, that gives you fifteen thousandths and two tenths. So that's really a minimum. Okay, you want at least that for. You know, boosted motors or nitrous engines, you're going to be creating more heat in there, and which is going to cause those rings to close up more. That's why people gap boosted motors. That's why they gap nitrous motors. This motor's not going to be forced induction. It's going to have a mild cam, so we're going to stick in that same ballpark. Now, I've already checked my gaps on my rings, and everything is between 16 and 18 thousandths. And... Being oversized, that one to three thousandths range, we will never, ever notice a power difference. In fact, you'd probably be just a touch safer because there's a least little chance that uh, your ring gap ends will touch. So, with that being said, let me show you how to check that real quick. Okay. First thing you'd like to do is take a little bit of light oil. Put it on your glove there. Or if you have one of the little fancy old squares, I don't have one, you can douse a little oil off the cylinder. Okay? So I'm gonna rub a little oil on the cylinder. Alright, I'm gonna get my piston ring. I'm gonna be checking the top ring here. Put a good cut of oil around the ring. And make sure the outside of it is coated up. Then we're going to spiral it. Hope you guys can see that. We're going to spiral it off into our cylinder here. Move these pistons, and maybe you can see this to touch better. So we have our piston ring down in our cylinder. I put the gap towards the bottom because that makes it just easier to check with our feeler gauge set here in just a second. So we'll take a piston. And we're going to just true, we'll use the piston to true our ring up. I'll push it down about midway in the cylinder just in case there's any. Oh yeah, that looks good and, good and square. Just in case there's any deviation in the cylinder. Usually at the top of the cylinders, especially before the rebuild, you'll have an area where the piston makes its you know, it's arch 
and that will leave the little little egg shape in there. And I like to put it down in the middle just to uh, just to see where we're at. So I know I've been pretty consistent between 16 and 18 on the ring gaps. So I'm going to go ahead and check a 16. 16 starts just fine. I'll go up to my 17. Oh, sorry, I thought I had a 17, but I don't. So we're going to go to our 18. Our 18 does start, but it feels tight. I don't believe a 19 will go. We've got our 19 thousandths field of gaze. Let's check it. Nineteen thousand will go, but it's tight. I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with that. And I have been consistent with that across all cylinders. So now that we know how to check our ring gaps, let's go through on how to install our rings. So we're going to take our pistons out and make sure you don't get these rings mixed up because uh, you've got four different sets here. Everyone is different and everyone serves its own purpose, okay? So we're gonna start with our oil ring spacers. These rings came from Hastang, Hastang, and they seem like a really good quality ring. I haven't had to gap any of them. Everything was perfect out of the box. So, we're going to install our bottom spacer. We're going to spiral that in. And once you get spiraled over, kind of just pull that over. Don't, don't try, try not to bend it. We're not going to have to space these rings on the oil ring because they have a built in space. Okay. Now, when you're installing these oil rings, I'll show you something right here. You're going to want the bottom ring gap on the spacer ring to be about an inch offset to one side. I'm installing on the sleeve of the piston here. That way I can have a reference point. And also, you see how the end of the oil ring curls up on both ends. That needs to be facing towards the top. Hey guys, I wanted to add one last correction to this video. Uh, I did find that if you will install this oil ring first, then install the spacers, everything goes in much, much easier. Keep in mind though, still offset one inch to the right and one inch to the left on your spacers. Bingo, that was that. We are done with our oil ring. All right, so let's tackle our second ring. And that is this stack. Now be cautious when you're installing the second ring. These are labeled with a top and it needs to go in there with the top, obviously on top. All right, let me show you. Oh, let's make my camera focus on that. You see right here. Hopefully you can see that, that reads top. So that is the top of our second ring. If you do not have this oriented correctly, you will have oiling issues in your motor. The thing probably will not last. All right, so we're gonna start this in on a 90 degree angle here. We're gonna work this around, making sure that our ring does not scratch our piston. Alright, that ring is installed. 
Now, some people say that, you know, you've got to worry about the ring gaps being oriented away from each other. I'm here to tell you, I don't think that matters because once this thing is up and running, everything is warm and floating inside there. These rings don't know where they're at. They're going to sit there and they're going to spin and who, your motor's not going to bypass a lot because the rings have rotated. You will never know. All right, but just for superstition, I go 180 out, then I'll install our top ring. Our top ring doesn't have an orientation there, do all whatever direction you want to put them in there. So I'm going to spin that in there. Once it gets to the edge, we'll pick up and we will set it in our groove. Uh oh, get that one a little cock out on the back. Let me bring the background a little bit. There it is. All right. Then we'll set it, pull and set it in our groove. All right. And that piston is done. If you've got anything you've got questions about or any things that you think I should have done different, please let me know in the comments. Well, that's it for today. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you think of anything I could have done different or better, please let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you guys.